Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage, Kevin Allison and Risk. Hello! Howdy, everyone. Thank you. Thanks so much for coming. Wow, what an amazing crowd. What an... What a thrill to be here. This is actually the very first time that I think Risk is being simulcast somewhere. And it just so happens that the place we're being simulcast is immediately to my right. <laughs> just like right over there. If that wall wasn't there, that's what... Hey, let's hear from the people who are in the simulcast room. <laughs> There are people in this room that are confused about where they are. <laughs> I'm a little bit confused, too. Listen, let me explain. How many people here are familiar with the Risk podcast? <laughs> Risk is the show where people tell true stories that they never thought they'd dare to share in public. And what that means is that anything goes. Okay? It's a really um, uncensored show. We always say nothing is inappropriate unless something is. <laughs> I had someone ask me, he wanted to do the show, and he said, uh, would it be inappropriate if I told the story about the time that I vomited into my girlfriend's vagina? <laughs> I said, that would be so appropriate. <laughs> And then he got up on stage and he said, well, actually, I'm not going to tell that. I'm going to tell about uh, how much I love my grandma. <laughs> Which actually is totally appropriate for us, too. Let me tell you something. We travel. We take risk around. And what we love to do is sometimes bring a headliner. Like, for example, we have Janine Garofalo with us tonight. <laughs> But we also love to bring storytellers from the community up here. And let me tell you, during the past couple of weeks, I've been hearing these stories from our Philadelphia storytellers, and Philadelphia really brings it. <laughs> these stories, they are going, they're going to make you laugh. They're also probably going to make you cry. Uh, they may make your jaw drop. They may even give you a boner, <laughs> even if you don't have a penis. Let us know if that, that would be unexpected. Let us know if, just shout it out if that happens to happen during the course of the evening. Oh my goodness. Well, you, you should really check out the podcast because it features not just the, the best of the stories from these live shows, but it also features radio style stories that get very, very intimate. In fact, I do a lot of, uh, in my sex life, uh, bondage and discipline. Uh, dominance and submission, and sadomasochism. So you you got to check out the podcast because from week to week, you have no other way of knowing if I'm still okay. <laughs> from week to week, I sometimes don't know if I'm still okay. But I'm very frank about it on the podcast. Uh, now tonight, our theme is thanks. So these are stories about gratitude. Some of the stories have big thanks, uh, some of them have little thanks, and some of them are about people saying, no thanks. <laughs> but, uh, you know, in my own stories, one thing I've become aware of recently is the fact that, especially when I'm telling stories about stuff that happened way back when in my childhood, I will sometimes forget about how, like, one character was really there for me. You know, one person was really like, had my back and is an important part of the turning point in the story. We sometimes forget that, you know, we've come to where we are because of other people. So let me share a rather repulsive story uh, to illustrate that fact. <laughs> uh, I went to an all boys Catholic high school in Cincinnati, Ohio. 
Uh, it's a very Republican town. It is the most conservative town north of the Mason-Dixon line. And I knew I was gay from like the day I was born. I basically came out of my mother's vagina and said, oh my God, I love boys' butts. <laughs> so it was very hard for me growing up in Cincinnati because, you know, it's, it's not like homosexuality doesn't exist there. It's like sexuality does not <laughs> exist there. <laughs> Nevertheless, I went to a very liberal, Jesuit high school and I kind of fell in love with my high school because my high school kind of fell in love with me because I was good in the musical theater stuff. <laughs> so I was kind of popular and my confidence started gaining and even though it was the early 80s, I did start to come out of the closet to some of my closest friends there. It was radical at that time. That was just not done then. Now, one of my friends, his name was Ben, and I especially loved to pull pranks on him, little jokes to kind of scare him with gay stuff. <laughs> you know, like, boo, a dildo! <laughs> Not that I was into that at this point. I was, I was still innocent as a flower, but I loved making little pranks and jokes. Well, one day, I had an idea at home. You see, at school, we had this inter-homeroom mail system, right? At In homeroom, we would pass around a basket, and if you wanted to send a message to someone on the faculty or another student in another class, you'd just put an envelope into the inter-homeroom mail, and some student would pick it up and go deliver it. One day, I'm at home, and I notice I have this condom. Now, I have no idea why I had a condom, because at 16, I had no need for it. But I had this idea. I thought, wait a minute. I know the perfect prank. What if I jerked off into this condom, <laughs> pulled it off, put it in an envelope, wrote to Ben on it, put it in my book bag, and went to school the next day to drop it into the inter-homeroom mail. What could go wrong? Just classic American humor. Surely Tom Sawyer would have done the same thing if they'd have had prophylactics back then. Now, in retrospect, I look back and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> what truly was I thinking? You know, I think that there are some things, you read the news, you'll read the news about like some vandalism that has happened, and you'll think to yourself, well, either that person had an acute case of schizophrenic paranoia, or they were 16. <laughs> when you're that age, you just do this stuff that you really, in retrospect, I, I don't know, I cannot explain it, but I did it. I jerked off into the condom, put it in the envelope, put it in the book bag, and put it in the inter-homeroom mail system. Now, like I said, it was a Jesuit high school, so the next class that day was called Moral Choices. <laughs> This is a class all about how sometimes in your life you might do something that might not sit that well with other people. And I thought it was downright fascinating. And I'm all caught up in the class when suddenly someone walks in with a note for the teacher and then someone is passing me a note from behind. It's another of my friends. I open this note and it says, Kevin, I know what's happening. I was in homeroom with Ben, and he accidentally ratted you out. What happened was that Ben opened the envelope, looked at what was inside, and said, oh, Allison! And so the teacher immediately knew what was going on and sent it to the vice principal in charge of discipline. So I'm sitting there realizing what's happening and the teacher calls me and he says, you've got to go to the vice principal's office and I am numb, okay? I am on pins and needles. I am thinking, wait a minute here. I've done the kind of thing that could get someone expelled. I did something fucked up. 
for the sake of doing something fucked up. And now I am terrified of a figure of authority looking into my eyes and saying, you're fucked up. Well, let me tell you about Mr. Mayor. He was this little bald guy with a real Napoleonic complex who was really angry all of the time, and he was the baseball coach there at the high school. So he would get on the PA regularly, the PA system, and announce to all the students that something was going wrong and it had to be disciplined, and he'd always say, you know, are you on my team or are you not on my team? You want to play hardball? I'll play hardball. You do not want to play hardball. He loved the word hardball. Now, I had never exchanged a word with this man. I was terrified of him. And here I was about to have a very intimate conversation with him. So I walk into his office, and as I'm walking in, I realize, Kevin, your face is totally pale right now. Kevin, your lips <laughs> are chattering right now. It couldn't be more obvious that you are guilty. But I sit down, and then I notice he looks rather shaken up, too. <laughs> He's a little ashen-faced himself. And he just says, Allison, did you do this? And he pushes the envelope across the table to me. And I pick it up and open it up and take a look inside. And I just said, oh, no. I can't imagine what this even is. <laughs> and he just stared at me for a while. And he finally said, okay then. And he dropped it in the wastebasket. And I got up and I walked out and I was totally bewildered. I thought to myself, that had to have been so obvious that I was guilty but he seemed to have just let me go. Can it be that he couldn't see what was right in front of his face? Well, years later, I had lunch with another member of the faculty, uh, in the director of the musical theater program. <laughs> and she said to me, you know what? Mr. Mayer just died. I said, oh, no, that's a shame. She said, yeah, but there's more to it. He was in the closet all those years. I said, Mr. Mayor? She said, yeah. And another thing, he absolutely adored your performance in our production of Godspell. <laughs> I said, really? <laughs> she said, yeah, but there's more. She said, he heard through the grapevine that you had slowly started coming out of the closet to some of your friends and some teachers at school. And he was amazed by that. He was so impressed with you and thought the world of you. And it was at that moment that I realized he knew I was responsible for what was in that envelope. <laughs> But we were teammates. <laughs> so he took one for the team. <laughs> <laughs>